greeting everyone. I am Dr. Deependra from Conceptual Orthopedic and I welcome you all in today's connection with Pahimsa. And today's hour is going to discuss another very important topic which is frequently asked in your exam is a Blount's disease. So I think this talk is going to be very useful to all of you. So without any more delay, I welcome you sir on the board and I request you to start your presentation. Now it's over to you Dr. Pahimsa. Uh, thank you Dr. Deependra. So yes, so this is indeed an important topic but which is very uh, less commonly seen in the practice because it's quite <laughs> rare compared to the uh, regular genu varum that we see almost on an everyday basis. So this is Blount's disease, which was initially described by uh, Laka back in 1930, uh, early 1900s. And uh, or Laka described this as a progressive tibia varus deformity. And later Blount's, uh, in his collection of cases or his case series, uh, found out that uh, this progressive tibia vera uh, was present in two different forms. That is either the infantile form, which is seen in children less than five years of age, <laughs> between say two to five years of age, and adolescent, which started after the age of 10 years. Okay, So he called it as an early onset Blount's disease and a late onset Blount's disease. And he termed this particular progressive tibia vera as osteochondrosis deformans tibia. Okay. Uh, Apart from Erlacher and Blount, another name which comes uh, to the mind when we're talking about Blount's disease would be that of Langen's cure. Okay, so uh, these are the three names which we associate generally with uh, Blount's disease. Now, infantile Blount's disease is a varus deformity of the proximal tibia in an otherwise healthy child. Okay, so this is very commonly seen uh, <coughs> between the ages of two to five years. Remember, below the age of 18 months, uh, the varus in the tibia is physiological. Okay, so if you see the Selenius and Vanka curve, the uh, the bowing of the lower limbs is in varus till 18 months of age. And between 18 months to 24 months, it can remain in varus or it can become straight or rectus. After that, between the ages of 3 to 5 years, it goes into gross genu valgum. And then by seven years of age, it comes to seven degrees of valgus. Now, if the child after two years of age continues to have a genu varum deformity and it is progressive, then we call it a Blount's disease. This is infantile Blount's disease is seen very commonly in boys compared to girls and it's bilateral in about 50% of the cases. <laughs> now, the etiology is unknown. But we think that there is a spontaneous deceleration of growth in the posterior medial proximal tibial physis. So the proximal tibial physis, the posterior and medial part of the physis does not grow, which leads to a deformity which has varus, it has flexion and it has an internal rotation deformity. So these are the three deformities that you see that is varus, flexion and internal rotation deformity. The risk factors which we see very commonly in children with Blounts is uh, obesity, uh, early walking age, when children walk by say eight months, nine months, or even earlier, and a large stature children. But out of all of these, it is only obesity that has a very, very high propensity of uh, uh, correlation with Blounts disease. Now the clinical features show a variable amount of varus deformity of the proximal tibia. Uh, so this can be unilateral, it can be bilateral, and it could also be asymmetric. By the meaning of asymmetric would be more vara on one side compared to the other side. Apart from the varus deformity, there is an increased internal tibial torsion and there is a palpable prominence or beaking of the proximal medial tibial epiphysis and metaphysis and in children who are having a unilateral disease you will see a leg length inequality because this is a varus deformity you will see a shortening of that limb children with infantile blounts disease will not have any tenderness no knee effusion and no restriction of range of motion at the joint but when they walk there may be a deformity accentuating varus instability. That means when they start walking, they have a lateral thrust gait. The moment they weight bear, 
the knee has a lateral thrust which is seen in these children now coming to the radiological classification this was given by langenskiold and langenskiold classified them into six presumably presumably progressive stages okay now uh, type 1 remember we do not classify this in very very small children this will always be done after the age of 2 to more than the age of 2 years okay in a type 1 deformity there is only a medial metaphyseal beaking medial metaphyseal beaking remember you do not classify this in children less than 12 to 18 months they have to be more than 18 months for you to classify them okay so medial metaphyseal beaking is seen in stage 1 and in stage 2 there is a saucer shaped deformity or defect in the medial metaphyses not in the epiphyses but the metaphyses has a saucer shaped beaking why are stage 1 and 2 important it's because stage 1 and 2 have a high propensity to spontaneously restore okay they can get better with conservative management then we have type 3 where the saucer deepens into a step it becomes a full step and in type 4 the epiphysis drops into this step the epiphysis drops into the step of the metaphysis so that is type 4 now till type 4 if you do a surgery spontaneous restoration is possible because the physis remains intact okay spontaneous restoration can be possible okay it is not common but it is possible to happen it is common only below stage 2 in type 5 we have a double epiphysis and in type 6 there is a medial bony bar which is evident a bony bar which is evident and this is by the age of 10 to 13 years now these are presumably progressive stages and if they are operated early there is a chance that you can reverse them or it will not progress further however if it is stage 5 and 6 even after the operation of uh, uh, osteotomy and correction if the child grows there will be recurrence of the deformity because there is a bony bar which is formed and the medial physis is not growing now apart from langenskiold classification we have another line which was drawn by levin and drennan we call it the metaphyseal diaphyseal angle or the dmda drennan's metaphyseal diaphyseal angle so this is measured on ap radiographs to differentiate physiological tibial varus from infantile blounds disease how do we do is it's very simple you draw a metaphyseal line you draw the perpendicular to the diaphyseal line and take the angle in between so <laughs> this is the metaphyseal line if you see the metaphyseal line is drawn from the lateral end to the medial beak where the beak ends so that is the metaphyseal line then you draw a line along the long axis of the tibia you draw a perpendicular to that and you take the angle in between if it is more than 16 degrees then it is diagnosed as an infantile blounds disease if this angle is less than 9 degrees then it is diagnosed as a physiological varus however for children between 9 and 16 degrees you need to keep them on close follow up till they fall into either one of these two categories either physiological varus or infantile blouse disease